A second order Luca Salen key active filter designed with what one archive is shown here. We want to analyze the circuit, understand intuitively why it is low pass, and then find the transfer function. So for the op amp, as usual, we make the assumption that op amp is ideal. So we have ideal op amp. Ideal meaning that the input impedance of op amp is for the two input terminal is infinite, and uh, also it means uh, that it means that the open loop gain of op amp is infinite. So assuming that the VV and minus VE, the two supply voltages of the op amp are properly set, then op amp is designed and set to operate in linear region of operation. So operate in linear region. So it's not saturated. Okay, with that in mind, um, because op amp is ideal, in linear region of operation, not saturated. And as you can see, negative feedback loop, therefore virtual short is the correct assumption. So V positive voltage at the positive input terminal of op amp should be equal to voltage at the negative input terminal of the op amp. So these two voltages should be the same at the input terminal. Now, um, let's. this is an important uh, equation, so let's keep that in mind as uh, equation number one. Now, you can see that uh, because no current flows through the input terminals of op amp, because we are assuming that input terminal, uh, each, each input terminal has uh, infinite impedance, so no current can flow. Therefore, uh, the relationship between the voltage at negative terminal and V out is simple voltage division between these two resistors. So I can write that V at negative input terminal is just the voltage division from V out across these two resistors. So it's R3 divide by R3 plus K minus one R3 times V out. And this, as you can see, is as simple as just simplifying denominator. It becomes just simple V over K. And using one and two, because one says V positive should be equal to V negative. So using one, I conclude that V negative equal to V positive equal to V out over k. So let's keep this as our equation number two. Now um, I know v positive is v over k. The thing is the current that flows through the in input positive terminal is zero. So this current uh, is zero. Nothing can flows to the input of op amp. So whatever current is going through C2 should go to R2 as well. Very basically in this circuit, R2 and C2 are effectively in series, and I can compute Vx, the relationship between Vx at this node uh, and V positive is just the voltage division between C2 and R2. So I can write then uh, this. I can write uh, V positive, or let's say V positive terminal is equal to one over C2s divided by R2 plus 1 over C2S times Vx. Or uh, sh uh, shuffling things around, I can get Vx equal to, um, as you can see if we simplify everything here, it become um, 1 plus R2 C2S times V positive, which from equation 2, so using equation two, I'm going to substitute V positive with V out over K. So V out over K. All right, so let's keep this as equation number three. Now, <clears throat> I have Vx as defined as a function of V out. Um, the only remaining thing to do, and of course, I also have this current. Just uh, let's write it down as well. So uh, the current through C2 is simply... Uh, I'm going to write it. The current through R2 and C2, which is in, which are effectively in series, that current is I of, let's say, R2, which is the same thing as I of C2, is equal to V positive, which is V out over K, according to equation 2, divided by uh, 1 over C2s, the impedance of cap. And uh, just let's keep it in mind. It's C2s divided by K times V out. So just let's have this as equation number four with respect to the current 
to the R2 and C2 series. Now, at Vx, I can write one KCL. Basically, the current that goes from V into Vx should be equal to the sum of current that goes from Vx outward to R2 and the current that goes to C1. So, uh, writing one KCL. Let's say, writing uh, KCL at node X, give me this, uh, Vn minus Vx divided by R1 is equal to the current to R2 that I just computed here. So C2S divided by K times V out. And the current to C1, which is another just uh, Vx minus Vo divided by impedance of cap. So Vx minus V out divided by 1 over C1S. OK, we need to. Uh, just uh, do a little bit of a shuffling of the parameters and variables around. Multiply uh, everything here on both sides of this equation by R1 so that we get rid of that. So we get Vn minus V out equal to, sorry, we get Vn minus Vx equal to um, R1 C2S divided by K times V out uh, plus R1 C1S times Vx minus V out. Okay, so now that we have this, we can do one last simplification. And uh, uh, by that simplification, I mean, let's just move everything related to V out uh, we can also do, by the way, we can substitute for V of X using equation number three. Let's also do that. So using equation number three, I can just get Vn minus um, one plus R2 C2S times uh, V out over K. That substitution for Vx is equal to um, R1 C2 S divided by K times V out and finally plus R1 C1 S and uh, we are substituting for Vx here and then factoring out V out so we get this we get uh, 1 plus R2 C2 S divided by K that's substitution for Vx minus 1 I am factoring out V out Okay, so uh, the nice thing is, as you can see, uh, two components on the right side of the equation, they have you know, just function of V out. One component on the left side of this equation is also a function of V out. Move it to the other side, and we finally arrive at the transfer function of interest. So we can write V out over V in, which is our system transfer function in this case, equal to, uh, as you can see, equal to uh, we have, 1 over, uh, we can also just, uh, if, if, if you're interested, if that helps, we can, uh, for example, just uh, multiply everything by k so that it becomes nicer. Let's do that. So it becomes effectively k over. And then in denominator, what we have is this. We have 1, uh, and then we have plus if we shuffle things around, we end up with R1 plus R2 times C2 plus 1 minus K times R1 C1 S in denominator. And finally, we have plus R1 R2 C1 C2 S squared. So this is the uh, transfer function of interest that we wanted to find. As you can see, uh, denominator is a second order as a function of S. So no wonder this system is a second order. And the existence of two caps in series with their corresponding register indicate that this system most likely is second order, which is now confirmed. 
you can of course set the value of these resistors properly so that you get to the transfer function of interest in terms of the poles. There will be two poles in the system. Now, intuitively speaking, why this is a low-pass filter intuitively without even the need to do this uh, transfer function finding? At super low frequencies, uh, C2 and C1, uh, their impedances is 1 over uh, Cs. Uh, in sinusoidal steady state analysis, we replace S for impedance of cap with J omega. So JC omega becomes 1 over JC omega becomes the impedance of cap. At super low frequency or DC, omega approaches 0. Therefore, denominator approaches 0. Therefore, the whole impedance of cap goes to infinity. That means at super low voltage at DC, these caps are open. So effectively, at super low frequency or DC, the circuit looks like this. We will have Vn. And then we will have two resistors R1 and R2 in series. And uh, that's the input to the op amp. And then it goes to the voltage division between those two uh, resistors that we have K minus 1 R3 and R3. So there is no current flowing through the input of op amp because we know that input of op amp is in infinite impedance. So effectively, V in just appear at the positive terminal. It means negative terminal is equal to Vn, and as you can see, negative V negative is V out over K. So effectively, uh, V out over V in becomes K. Basically, it means as shown in denominator, when we go to uh, omega 0 DC, S and S squared disappear in denominator, gain is K as also confirmed intuitively. At super high frequency, uh, omega goes very high, denominator becomes very large, so impedance of cap becomes very small, shorted, AC shorted. So at super high frequency or large enough uh, sinusoidal frequency, then the voltage at positive is AC grounded because C2 is effectively short. And uh, uh, because of that, then uh, the voltage at positive terminal is AC zero. So the voltage at negative terminal because of mutual short is AC zero. And then as a result of that, uh, naturally, V out related to negative terminal with this equation number two is also forced to zero. So effectively, the output of this circuit at large enough frequency will be zero irrespective of input. Therefore, nothing at large enough frequency and above can pass through this circuit. So no wonder this circuit is low-pass filter. All right, so this is the transfer function shown here. If you want to get into steady state analysis, sinusoidal steady state analysis, just replace S with J omega. So S become J omega here, and S squared become J squared omega squared, which is negative omega squared. And then uh, we can find out the amp magnitude and phase response of the transfer function. I hope that this is helpful.